Now, there is something interesting here because look at this. Uh, when we go from 2009, you know, we started at 100 and we go all the way to 400. So it's actually a few hundred percent increase. And here it just tells us, oh, it's only, it's only 40%. And you probably, it's probably difficult to guess what that might be, but effectively what we're doing here, and I discussed this with you a little bit earlier, but it's always good to reiterate things because mm -hmm. they don't normally stick straight away in the mind uh, when we started. When we use a cumulative sum, I explained to you earlier that whenever we have a new return, we're actually always keeping the same cash base so we're not reinvesting anything we're always mm. keeping the same say we trade like ten thousand or hundred thousand dollars as a, as a base and that always stays the same whereas when we use a cumulative product we're actually always reinvesting our returns so here we don't reinvest them but when we reinvest them then then it changes and when we look at the price curve what it actually assumes is that we're always reinvesting our returns. Yeah. So one of the things that we could do, for example, is if we if we wanted to see what does this look like without reinvesting, we could do spy dot close dot pct change dot cumulative sum. Yeah. So now we're actually running the pct change and then using a cumulative sum because a cumulative product is reinvesting, a cumulative sum is non reinvesting. So if we run this and plot it, you can actually see the difference or the, 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 the change is much, much smaller. In this case, you can see it's only 1% change. Now, isn't that interesting? When we draw samples here from this distribution, we end up on average with 40%, but the actual SMP ends up much, much higher than we would expect. That's fascinating, isn't it? The price of this is actually a complete outlier on this distribution curve, like which isn't even like even with a 100,000 trajectories, we can't even get to this. Is that because we, we take like the, the random choices? Yeah, it's true. It's because we take the random choices, but what could it be that drives the return that much higher than what we would actually expect? It's a very difficult question, but <laughs> what I'm trying to do is basically inspire you to think a little bit about things and in the nature of what this could be, because this is actually like, like understanding this already goes very, very deep into the guts of dynamics of prices and so on. And this is what we can later on exploit for our trading strategies. One yep, thing that, that comes to my mind, like, is just like that it's overvalued in a way. Like that, uh, that yeah. the markets are not that rational in a way. And they're like saying like, yeah, it goes up forever kind of. And, and therefore it, it goes that high, but realistically yeah. from a realistic point of view, shouldn't i don't know that's obviously a matter of opinion and i'm kind of of the same opinion myself whether you like it or not but this is that it is actually also a, a good mathematical uh reason for uh why it is the way it is and and the mathematical reason for this is what's called auto correlation So the prices that we chose are completely random. Yeah. But what happens is an autocorrelation is that the next price. So, so we have a, we have a, a return or I shouldn't say the prices are random. The returns are random, of course, but in autocorrelation, what happens is this, we have a return and then, you know, We've got a return of this, whatever. And then the next return, then the return of the next time period, rather than being completely random, it's actually somewhat correlated to the previous return. If that 
makes sense, right? And so let's say we have a positive return in the previous period, then the probability to give a pro get a positive return in the next time period is higher. Is actually is actually not fifty fifty. It's actually more like say fifty five percent or something like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we call auto correlation. So mm -hmm. it's it's basically the time series correlates with itself. Mm -hmm. Interesting, isn't it? So <laughs> could we could we say that when like because we just figured out okay so like if if you have a positive return change then that also in the future the returns will be probably higher rather than 50 50 and therefore it's just that like the market performs even over average on this like kind of higher than it yeah so okay interesting so so basically yeah what 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 effectively happens is that if we take into account that, that there is autocorrelation, then we would see potentially that the returns are sort of abnormally going in one direction more than, than you would expect them to be. So that's also called momentum, or you may have heard the word trend or a trending series. <laughs> yeah. So. It's clear when you see this, this is clearly a trending series, right? This is really like going up, 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 but it's not, it's not perfectly going up all the time, but, but it does go up significantly, right? So what basically happens is that rather than choosing random returns from the series, we're actually quite biased towards choosing returns or, or the next time step we're biased to choosing one that is actually sort of going in the same direction as the previous one so that's it that's an interesting one this is what i i want to do today before we close show you how how this works we, we can actually simulate this and really what what's so interesting is when we simulate these effects we start really understanding deeply the nature of how those uh, series work is just simply called autocorrelation. And if we want to simulate something as complex as these 10,000 paths with 500 links, you can do it in one line, right? <laughs> and you were like a bit skeptical, like, come on, we can do this in one line, really? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, we could even, uh, you know, we, if, if you wanted, you could basically plot that, that, or you could wrap this histogram plot around this line here. And, and it would just be one single line, like with, with quite a, mm -hmm. a sophisticated Monte Carlo simulation, right? And so when we do autocorrelation, it's usually a bit easier to do it in a few lines. You can do it in one, but I normally just do it in, in, in several because it's easier to understand. 